Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're gonna be continuing on with the neural network Flappy Bird app that we started building in a video a couple months back. So if you guys haven't seen the original video, uh, make sure you watch that one first before watching this one. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, just as a recap, what we're basically doing with this project is building a replica of the game Flappy Bird, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And we're gonna be using machine learning. We're gonna be using a neural network combined with the genetic algorithm to essentially make the birds teach themselves how to play the game. Uh, since the last video, I've made a lot of improvements and I've now pretty much confirmed that the genetic algorithm does work, at least in the way I've implemented it. And you can see here that the birds are actually learning and they do become progressively smarter. So we can even get up to a high score of almost 100. Um, and yeah, so basically I'm gonna be showing you guys what I've changed in the code since the previous video. And I'm also gonna be uh, implementing the final feature that there is to implement with this app, which is basically gonna to be to be able to save a bird and reload it in another run of the app. So we're gonna basically have a way to automatically save the neural network for the best or the smartest bird. And then when the app reloads or reopens, you can actually choose to reload that bird back in from a file and then continue from that best saved bird. So we're gonna go over a couple of the changes that I've made. So let's just go back on the Mac and have a look at the source code. So since last time, um, I've actually added some basic graphic improvements for a start. I mean, this is not really important to the actual uh, machine learning aspect, but before you may have remembered, the birds were actually just colored blocks, colored squares, and they were generated with just random colors. So that was the only thing that kind of distinguished them. Um, instead, this time I've actually replaced that with an actual UI image of the actual original Flappy Bird. So it's uh, this bird graphic right here. And as you saw with the video just now, that, that is now what the birds look like. So they kind of look more like the real Flappy Bird app. And I also added like the background image and stuff like that. So uh, already it looks slightly better, but obviously that's not the important part. The important part is what I've changed with the genetic algorithm. So if we actually look at that clip from the previous video, you can see this bird, one bird left, and it got on to like five or six in terms of the score. And then, uh, yeah, shortly after this video clip ended, the bird actually died anyway. So it didn't get much further than that. And what I basically determined is that that was just complete luck. Now, the, the fact that Flappy Bird is such a simple game, it actually turns out that it's very, very easy for, by chance, especially when generating a thousand birds, it is quite likely you're gonna get one bird that's actually already able to play the game fairly well. So I'm pretty sure that's what happened in that previous video. Uh, so obviously that was pretty much down to luck. So I actually kind of had to rethink the whole algorithm to actually get the birds to learn. So obviously now, as you can see, we actually made a huge step in terms of the progress from getting the birds to actually learn collectively. Now you can see from the clip at the start of the video that it's not just one bird who is surviving through many levels. It's actually a load of them together. Um, and that obviously proves now that I've actually kind of at least improved the genetic algorithm. Now it's still not there to what I want it to be, but we'll discuss that in a bit. But I'm gonna show you guys what I actually changed. So first of all, uh, I'm not sure if you remember the code from the previous video, but here we have the two methods that are gonna basically set the weights for the next generation that comes from the initial weight. So basically we have this kind of mutation function going on here. Now, I'm still not implementing any kind of crossover or anything like that. That is for another future part of this video, uh, video series, sorry. and. Um, but yeah, so what we have done, well, basically we have this random number now, it's generated between zero and 600. So it's definitely a lot less likely uh, that this will occur. And this will basically randomize one of the genes. Now before, I believe that the uh, the reason it was failing before and the reason it was all down to chance is because this uh, probability of a random, uh, random gene being mut mutated was too high. So essentially, uh, it didn't really have an effect and every generation, every new generation, because of the likelihood, the high likelihood that the gene would be randomized, every single bird was essentially completely random again. So it's basically like just replaying the very first generation over and over again, which as you can see, obviously eventually you get lucky and you generate a bird that can play the game fairly well. But as I said, that's just down to chance because Flappy Bird is such a simple game anyway. So now we are actually kind of uh, progressing these genes through the next generations. So they are actually, uh, these next generation birds are actually inheriting properly from the new gene, uh, from the previous genes. Um, whereas before it was just completely random essentially. So uh, yeah, that is why, that is the main improvement basically. Other than that, I didn't really have to change too much. It was just this probability and the birds actually do now learn quite well as you can see. Now there is still an issue with this um, and I'm gonna probably do more parts in the future where we implement the proper genetic algorithm which involves taking the two fittest birds and kind of crossing their genes over. So you get a combination of both. And this actually kind of more closely resembles um, actual natural selection in biology where you have the parent, uh, the both parents and their genes obviously are crossed over and mutated at the same time. 
So we'll probably implement that at some point and then we'll see, we'll actually compare that against how it's doing right now because although at the start of this video I showed you guys that they actually did do quite well, a load of the birds were making it to like up to like level 100 or so, uh, on other runs of the game you can tell there is still actually a luck factor in this because I have this running again right now and I don't know if you can see this but we're on generation 200 and the high score is only 6. So these birds obviously have not learned as effectively as the first birds, uh, the one I showed you at the start of the video. So there's still definitely a luck factor in this and that is obviously what we want to improve. We wanna know that every run of the program we can actually learn them to the same kind of rate or the rough rough, rough rate that they're gonna uh, learn. So that is uh, for another future video, but obviously I just wanted to show you guys the kind of the changes I made uh, since, since the, the previous video and now. And uh, yeah, this video will basically just be implementing the way of saving and loading a bird. So the way this is gonna work is basically taking the bird or the player object, which is a custom class I created, so this contains the actual bird and its brain, which is the neural network. And what we're gonna do is essentially save this to some file. So we're gonna like serialize it to XML um, or something along those lines. I actually have never worked with saving files on an iOS app, so this is gonna be kind of new to me. But And I'm thinking that the way we're gonna have this work is basically after every generation is finished, whatever bird was the smartest is gonna be automatically saved so the user doesn't have to do anything. That is just being constantly saved and overwriting the previous save as the generations go on. And then, so obviously that's happened automatically, the user doesn't have to think about that. And when, when they reopen the app, there will be an option to start from fresh and relearn, or there'll be an option to load the previously saved bird. And then you can kind of continue where you left off, or just as I said, you can show people that you have that smart bird. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get implementing. I need to do a little bit of research first because as I said, I've never really saved any files on iOS. I think we can use NS user defaults, although someone did say that that doesn't work with custom classes. So I'm gonna have to uh, do a little bit of research and figure out how to get this done. But yeah, I'll be back once that is implemented. Okay, so I've kind of got uh, the basics of this working now. So we're using this NS uh, coder stuff, uh, NS decoder, so we can actually save our custom object to NS user defaults. And uh, I'll quickly show you guys what we've done. So if we run this for the iOS simulator, basically I've set it up to automatically save the weights of the best bird for a current round. So if we just set this really low, so they're very likely to die, we'll wait for all these to die. Click load. And I do have a couple breakpoints set at the moment, but you can see that these weights get read back out from the NS user default. So this will be saved um, across uh, relaunches of the app. So we can actually load this out. So the, the next thing to do is actually get this to allow you to start a game fresh with these custom weights because at the moment it's just logging them. We haven't got anything set up to actually allow this bird to kind of be added back to the scene and run again. So that's what I'm gonna do now and then the thing is pretty much done. All right, so I've finished implementing that feature. So I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. I'm gonna get my iPad up on the screen here with QuickTime Player. And I'm just gonna run this for a couple minutes to allow the birds to train. So this is again from scratch. So we're gonna generate a thousand birds per generation. And I'm just gonna leave this going until we have kind of a smart-ish bird. And then I'll show you guys that we can actually relaunch the app and then use the, using this button at the bottom of the screen here, load bird, we'll be able to reload a bird from the previous run of the app. And it should be, it should have the same neural network essentially with the same weights. And therefore should be able to play the game uh, flawlessly without having to retrain. So uh, yeah, after this, basically the project is pretty much done to what I was, uh, to the point I wanted to get it to. As I said though, I probably will do some other videos kind of playing around with variations of the genetic algorithm to see if we can actually improve the rate of learning and the overall efficiency of the learning because as I did mention, it's still sometimes they don't learn as well as I'd like them to. As you can see here, this is not necessarily the best, uh, the best one I've had. We have 12 generations and they've only got through one pipe. So yeah, sometimes you, you do have to kind of rerun the app and there's a little bit of a luck factor there, but maybe I'll do a video where we actually compare the efficiency between uh, using the genetic algorithm that I've got at the moment versus using the crossover and then versus just tweaking some of the values to see um, if, if anything changes. So that will probably come in a bit of a later video. So also another thing I was thinking of doing is actually taking this project even further and developing a mobile substrate tweak that uses the idea of a neural network playing a game but in a way that we can actually apply it to real iOS apps. So essentially you can inject the neural network tweak into say the real Flappy Bird app or some other kind of basic 2D games. And then the tweak would actually interpret data from the app. So we can either use pixel information um, or we could actually probably hook into um, the different classes being used and actually find, for example, coordinates of 
of the players and the pipes and things like that and actually feed that into the network and allow the network to kind of learn to adapt to these various different games. So it will be kind of a universal uh, you, you neural know, network that you can apply to many different iOS games. So that obviously will be a much more difficult project than something as simple as this. But yeah, who knows, maybe we'll do another video on that at some point in the future. So you can see these birds are actually taking a lot longer to train than I would like them to. Um, I mean, we are gradually getting somewhere. We got to a high score of three, but yeah, this is the kind of situation I was talking about where there still is definitely a luck factor depending on how the original birds are generated. It kind of can affect the whole learning process and they actually fail to learn. So I think I actually might have to uh, rerun the app and uh, we'll, try and, we'll try and get another generation that actually does work. So what you can see here is we've actually got some birds trained quite well here. We've got a high score of 14 already. Um, and most of the birds are making it through. You can see we've still got like, still had a few hundred birds to survive that first pipe. So this is kind of fairly trained. I'm just gonna test it out with this. So we're gonna wait till they die on this round and then that's gonna save the neural network. Then we're gonna close the app, reopen the app and then load it back in and check that it does actually have the same weights and we should be able to see it play through the pipes without having to retrain essentially. So let's just wait for this bird to die right here. All right, so he did just die there. He got to a high score of 47, so that was very well done. So we're just gonna close the app. And obviously we've got quite a smart bird there. So we wanna load that back in now by clicking on the load bird button. And you can see it regenerates that bird using the exact same weights for the network. And we should see that he can still play without having to retrain it. It still uses those networks and therefore can play the game quite well. So that feature is now implemented. Um, and yeah, you can see this is gonna play. Obviously you can still die because it's not a perfect bird. Uh, you probably have to train for a lot longer to get an actual perfect one, but yeah, you can see this one is actually quite smart. Um, so yeah, that is how the loading feature works. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the development of this project. As I mentioned, if you haven't seen the previous part where we actually uh, do the initial kind of development of the neural network class itself, then go ahead and watch that. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, yeah, leave in the comments any other ideas you have to how to take this project any further because as I said, I probably will do some more parts in this video series. This is definitely a pretty interesting topic and I'm still really new to machine learning. So if you guys are more experienced with that, then let me know um, of other ways we can, we can take this project and what else we can do with it. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.